Welcome to today's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I'm joined today by Doug Houlihan, Chief Commercial Officer for ClickLease. Thanks for joining me, Doug. Thanks for having me. No, um, absolutely. Um, Got to make sure, you know, when I saw your personality and that you were willing to do one of these with me, we'll make sure we try to keep this as fun for our audience as we possibly can. <laughs> fun may be all I have to offer. I'm not sure there's a lot else here, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try, to, try to deliver on that one. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you don't mind, Doug, just kind of tell us about, um, you know, your career in equipment finance to date. And then, um, you know, then we'll talk a little bit about ClickLease. Well, you know, I, I think get this on most of them is like, I had no idea really what, you know, for a while, what, what equipment finance was, um, never was really on my radar. And um, in 2000, moved to Chicago, I'm sorry, moved from Chicago to the San Francisco Bay Area okay. and uh, was in graduate school working at Wells Fargo. And I actually met Chris Enbaum. I was banking a little, little town, San Anselmo, where the uh, Allegiant Partners, you know, was a four person team and had like a $4 million balance sheet and was just, you know, trying to get started. And, and Chris and I hit it off. And um, actually, my wife had had gotten into the uh, the leasing business after we sold the company back in 97. And um, she got out of dietetics in the leasing. So I was actually sort of probing him to see if, you know, he had an opportunity for her. Um, we hit it off. And um, kind of that, that's what kind of sucked me into the, uh, the leasing world. Um, and I started in accounting, they were looking for somebody to be, you know, kind of the controller. So that was my start, but slowly kind of got into business development, started attending the trade shows, got to know the people, see the people. Uh, and I was hooked. I was at, uh, Allegiant for, well, till 2008. So about a little over seven years. Okay. Um, and then, you know, 2008 hit and, um, it was, it was survive somehow and save the company. I was primarily in business development. We had no money left to, to develop business for. So um, I left and actually started, co-founded Maximum Commercial Capital. Did that in the beginning of, of 2009, uh, you know, built, built that to a really nice size. And, uh, you know, was trying to figure out what, you know, what was kind of next. We had grown to a certain size and I don't know that as all, you know, as all the kind of partners that we had the same, same vision for what was next. And I was introduced to um, a group of investors that uh, wanted to do this, this equipment finance thing, commercial finance thing, and uh, got to know the team, the founders here, the investors, and we, we hit it off. That was late 2018, I'm sorry, late 2017. And uh, we launched, we launched ClickLease. Well, me, it was kind of me for a while <laughs> in, in January of uh, January of 2018 here in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I've been commuting now from California back and forth for about for about three years. And now we're up to 70 some people and, and rocking and rolling. And you know, I think really, really changing, you know, what, what's possible in commercial equipment finance. So it's, uh, it's been an exciting ride for sure. No, absolutely. And, um, you know, you said something interesting there where, you know, once you get to know some of the people, obviously I've known Chris um, since I got in equipment finance in 2005, but, you know, it's the industry. It's like, okay, yeah, equipment finance, that's something I want to do. And it's, well, um, then you meet some of the people, you go to the trade shows and then you're just like, well, I don't really see myself wanting to do anything else. Um, it's a great, it's a great industry. Yeah, well, when I, when I left, you know, when I first, you know, kind of we kind of announced I was leaving Allegiant. I think I got 200 plus emails just said, what are you doing next? Where are you going? What's going on? How do we work together? What happens? And it was just, I just got bombarded. And I was like, that's, that's maybe an asset I didn't know I had, you know, it's like just this, this great community, this great group of people. And uh, I was sharing the story last night that we hired a new sales manager, recently director of business development. And, um, I was telling her that, I mean, it's the people I think that, that keep you in the industry. It's really, really a, a great, a great community. So it's almost like family, you know, after, yeah. after 19 years now, I think I've been in the business. So it's, it's, I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. And this is my third organization and same thing holds true, right? It's like, okay, yeah. well, what do you got, what do you got going on next? What's up and what's going on? And, yep. and yep. even what's interesting is even the people that you competed against, 
you know, are willing to help out and say, Hey, um, you know, is there anything we can do for you? And that doesn't happen a lot. Um, so it's another I shared a, I shared a conference. I think, well, I think it was UAL at the time, maybe, maybe just starting NIFA in Vegas. And we hired a consultant outside, brought her in to kind of talk about, you know, succession planning and, you know, what do brokers do and how do they create some value in a business, something they can, you know, sell or whatever. And she did quite a bit of studying. We hooked her up with a lot of people and she, she came back. She said, this is the most interesting industry. She's like, it's, she goes, I like to call it co-opetition because you guys are sort of competing against each other, but you're always cooperating together. She's like, it's a really unique dynamic and, and it's true. It's totally true. So yeah, I think that was one of the first conferences that I actually had to talk at, and I made my session, thankfully. But, uh, <laughs> it's you impressive know. for Vegas, yeah. <laughs> Vegas and conference, it's kind of like, uh, yep. yeah. <laughs> Book Jesse for two in the afternoon, yeah. Yeah, right, no, <laughs> 9 a.m., not going to happen, but whatever. <laughs> um, so let's talk click lease, if you don't yeah. mind. Obviously, the company's been around for just a little over, oh, what, two and a half years? So um, what particular market segments are you in? Um, a little bit about so, that, if you don't mind. You know, I, I think, you know, where, where we operate and, and I think what we do are two really interesting things. So in a way, we, we kind of want to do it, but nobody else does, right? We are, we're a micro ticket lender. So, you know, really up to, well, 20,000 on some industries, 15 to 20,000 is our max approval as low as 15, but really it's our delivery and, and what we've built. I think that makes us okay. unique. You know, we, we truly brought a point of sale com consumer experience to the leasing industry. Um, and the, the conversation, you know, when I mentioned back in late 17, talking to these investors was like, why can't we take the consumer experience, point of sale, instant decisioning, instant financing, you're there, you're in front of a, you know, checking out or going through the process. Why can't we do that? Um, and we figured out a way to do it. So, you know, every, we are, we are, um, application to funding, instant approval. You can get docs and get a funded transaction within minutes on every deal. We don't have some where it's some, yeah, oh yeah, if, if you know, we got 10% where we can get this funded immediately or give you a, a pre-approval. It's, it's a true point of sale decision. Um, and it's, it's exciting. It's really funny when we go talk to, you know, some of our, I'll call it competitors, you know, um, customer, you know, um, and we tell them what we do and like, oh yeah, yeah, we have that. And they're like, whoa, wait a sec. <laughs> you actually fund deals like right away, instantly. And it's the same thing. We're not looking for any additional information, no banks. It's, it's a true instant binary decision. Yes, no, go to docs and the deal's done. So it's, it's really been exciting. You know, um, when, you, when you look at the landscape of where we play, I mean, there's still people in our business that that have faxed applications and that and that don't yeah. that don't use e-docs and no i mean that, I've, I've i've walked around offices and you see this like you know manila folders like spread like a like a rainbow on the floor and it's like <laughs> okay well, which one am i going next and you're just like i what what is this yeah right <laughs> why are you doing that and it's it's you know and you know we i think we all know where it's going to go you look you look at what a firm and Klarna are doing right i mean and it's it's a true experience, you know, great experience for the end user, great experience for the vendor. And, um, you know, we kind of always, really, we have this sort of vision, right? At Clickly, it's like, you know, we're trying what we want to do, but, but we want, I would say, I want commercial finance, at least what we're doing, to not be viewed as a necessary evil, which it is, right? Where you get your applicant and then you send them into this black hole or behind the curtain back in Emerald City and Oz, right? To say, <laughs> what happens and you know is this guy going to get any money right and we're we're delivering you know kind of the power of payments and and that real control over the experience right to the vendor so they can get them approved and then they can handle their transaction right and um and, and i think if we can deliver on that for the commercial finance space it's going to be it's going to be huge because people are people have a lot of bad experiences with using with using you know commercial leasing companies no, I mean, I just think from a, you know, a consumer perspective, you can go out to SoFi, takes what, five, five minutes to yep. put all your application in. And then it's like, there you go. And yep. even if that doesn't work, they'll be like, well, this person can, or like Lightstream or some of those products there. I mean, that's, that's fantastic, man, that you brought yep. this to so, uh, equipment finance. 
Yeah. So let's it's, talk about that. Um, the map behind you. Um, yeah. So what do you got going on back there? So I, I didn't have a fire here. Yeah, I probably should in Utah. It's a little chilly compared to California. So <laughs> I used our, I, we call this affectionately our nerd pen. So this is where our data scientists sit. And you know, this is this main map in the middle here. Am I circling that properly? That, yeah. that just shows like all, all the recent, that's our current applications that are going on. Um, I, I, I mentioned this earlier. We, we don't have any red dots, like red dots is if somebody triggers our fraud, you know, triggers, we have some fraud identifiers in there that would trigger it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, so, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but you know, that's, that's our current, our current, our current app flow. So it's, you know, honestly, um, it's really cool and fun. And then we have some different on the sides, we have some different reporting and different things up there and heat Well, it's maps, almost like you have the, the periodic stuff. table of elements there on the left. Yeah, we side. do. Well, we're memorizing that. So like I said, these are nerd pens. So we got smart people in here. Um, I mean, part of it, part of it's just cool and fun, you know, bankers love it. So like they walked in like, what is that? You know, so it's a great conversation piece and shows off, you know, shows off the office, but it's, it's fun to see, you know, so it's trying to, no, you know, I mean, we're, was, we call ourselves FinTech. So we're trying to, trying to act like one. So. Nope. It was very neat. And then, um, you know, just well, it caught my attention and then plus, you know, it's all about the data. Yeah, I should, um, I should, I was trying to help, you know, get a fire on here, but not working. So that's, that's okay. I, and I don't think I'm skillful <laughs> enough to be able to superimpose one on oh. that screen. So I apologize for that. We'll do post post-production edits. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's that like? Um, so you jumping on a plane every Monday, going back Friday afternoon, what's, what's that like for three years? And is that for ever? So, um, so I didn't, yeah, not, 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 not talk about myself. I, should, I have three yeah, children, probably, yeah. right? I have three children that are, you know, middle school, high school age, really tough time to move. Right. And I was, you know, I was starting a new business, you know, brand, it, it was a startup. So, you know, committing to moving and uprooting the family and also knowing that I would be working all the time anyway in a startup, right. you know, um, we weren't, we just didn't make that decision as a family. And actually that was, in the negotiation, that was one of the toughest things. We're like, hey, we we can try it. We've just never seen it work where we have, you know, someone running our company that's that's doing it, uh, you know, from afar. Um, and and I'll be honest with you, it's kind of been great. Um, I I you know I hop on a plane Monday morning. You know, I leave the house a little after four. You know, jam to the airport, take a six a.m. flight. I'm in the office, you know, pretty close to nine in the morning Monday morning, so I don't miss much. Um, you know, then I work work a lot money, you know, I don't have any distractions. So I can, you know, be here 12, 14 hours a day and just jam. There's, there's really nowhere else to be. Um, and, um, and then I actually lately, I got out of the habit of flying. I used to fly Thursday night late and I get home at like one in the morning. Um, I started taking like a, a afternoon flight on Thursday and okay. it's, it's great. So really I'm, I'm gone Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Um, that's kind of been post pandemic. Um, and it's really, if I, if I was working in the Bay area and I was commuting to the South Bay or the city, I'd right. probably be gone most nights anyway. And, you know, I have really active children. Um, they're, they're hardly around in the evenings anyway. Most of the, the kids activities are on the weekends. My daughter's driving now. My son will be driving soon. So that'll help my wife out a lot. You know, she's, she's really a full-time chauffeur, but honestly, it's, it's not that bad. The, Actually, the break from the pandemic, I was home for seven months. I, it was great. You know, I got to spend a lot of time at home with them, um, kind of get back into the family thing. They they saw how worthless I am anyway, so it, they realized we're not missing anything when when you're gone. You know, so it was like, hey, mom, mom's got this figured out. So um, so it, it's really it's it's not nearly as bad as it, it probably sounds. Um, you know, and commuting in the Bay Area is, can be pretty brutal. So I I, I miss that too. So which which is a plus. So then um, do you find yourself just can hammer things out um, so much more e e when there's just less distractions? That's, that's the biggest thing I have in regards to how the last year's gone, where you sit oh. there and there's just so many distractions and you're just like, oh, let me just focus on this, please. Yeah. You know, when I'm at home still too, like even when I'm home on Fridays, like I'm, I might as well not be there. Like I, I kind of just get buried in what I'm doing, you know, and Fridays always seem to be for some reason, just get out of control, you know, in busy days, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been great. It, it probably sounds bad. And then, you know, with all the miles, it's, it's great. We're, we're taking a lot of fun trips as a family and gone to some great places and 
So, you know, the family, and then with, when you get a lot of status, it's good for the family. Cause you know, now my, my kids yeah. expect to fly first class all the time. So that's totally messed up, but um, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not bad. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm trying to look at it through rose colored glasses, but it's, no, it's actually I mean, that, been, that, that, actually that's been pretty great. So like, I didn't, I didn't jump on a plane until I was 16, you know, from upstate New York. We just, my family, we drove on vacations yeah. and like my son at the age of like th two, three sitting in first class. <laughs> and now we board planes. He's like, dad, are we upgraded? I'm like, stop. Right. Go, yeah. go. But I was, um, he's actually playing baseball in Cooperstown um oh, nice. you know in uh, july so we we're booking that trip and everything and the problem i have is i have so many miles but the flights are so cheap that it doesn't make sense to use miles because All right. the cost is so low so you're in that tween zone you're yeah like, oh. yeah but um, no, I, I got I a few it. trips coming up man and i'm i'm excited so i got like three different things booked right now so you've not been traveling is that right I've been on one trip um, in the last 12 months and yeah. I, I thought that was relatively um, like a somber experience because half the restaurants were closed down. There was no lobby bar. Um, there was just no fun activity. There's no buzz. You know, when you go to a city, yeah. there's like a buzz about it and it's like, oh, it's awesome. Um, I don't know what that's like for you. Um, you know, do you have like your own apartment there? Like all the food joints that you used to go to, are they all still open? Utah is pretty open. Yeah. So I, I keep an apartment here in Salt Lake. Um, Utah is pretty open. Um, you know, capacity I think now is like 50%. But um, since, you know, I was gone March through October, since I've been back in October, it's been, I could at least go in and, and sit down and eat. So um, okay. sometimes, you know, it, it's pretty minimal capacity. You got to wait a little bit, but it feels, and, and especially living in California, it's been a great relief because California just started cracking open recently. So it's been, it's been really nice to have some normalcy. Yeah. I was doing one of these yesterday with um, Dan from certain and um, oh, yeah. you know, he was talking about all those restrictions and everything. And you're just kind of like, Oh, like, can we not? And then Arizona, I'm just, not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. No, no, no. It's, that, that it's fine. bad. So, yeah. Arizona, Arizona has been kind of yeah. open since everything so yeah definitely yep. haven't had to go through that stuff but um moving along here so a little fun fact about yourself on the flight that you fly like you know so i have two pounds. one okay. which is maybe fun people may or may not know i actually have a full head of hair i just shave it off so which is <laughs> totally like that's i think a lot um, of people don't realize that but yeah i just i just shave my head so um i do have a, a full head of hair the other one, I, which is, I share that. Yeah. <laughs> um, if it, yeah, it starts, if I don't shave it, you know, every couple of days, it gets, it starts to get pretty long. Uh, the other thing is I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of become an evangelist for, for like cold water exposure. I started doing it like six years ago, um, training for some Spartan races and the water terrified me. And since I started that, like, it's a life changer. Like it's such a game changer. I actually started noticing I was sleeping way better. Stress wasn't impacting me anymore. You know, sleeping through the night. It's like, what's going on? So I started doing some research. It, uh, it pulled me into uh, this guy named Wim Hof, who's sort of this crazy Dutchman who does this, this breath work and, and cold water exposure. So I, I take a cold shower or a cold plunge pretty much every day. Um, and like, the colder the better and it's 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 really been a life changer and then like this breath work stuff like i can like three four minutes now i can hold my breath like going through this breath work stuff so it's it's a really interesting really? yeah but it's it changes so is, is that like cryotherapy is that something similar um i've been noticing similar. those things popping up or... cryotherapy is like a chamber you go into that's like really cold like a two minute blast yeah um you know but it's it's just you know they freeze the air with like liquid nitrogen or something and gets really cold really quick and there's benefits there but like as long as i don't turn into cold, han solo right cold like, water wanna, like yeah cold water is just a different thing but it, it's it's truly a life changer like it it's interesting it, it's a game changer yeah i can't imagine not not doing it anymore so yeah so i, I mean people that know me probably a lot of people have heard me talk about it because i just like i don't sleep i'm like cold showers i'm kind of sore cold shower cold you know getting a cold plunge so yeah 
I'll make sure the next time I'm in with Brooke that I'll just turn it really cold and she'll scream at me and I'll be like, this is for your good. It take, it's it's good for you. It takes it's, about it's, it's, 60 days of doing it every day, but it's, it's a good one. <laughs> um, you know, and then I guess kind of wrapping up here, Doug, like um, obviously you talked a lot about the benefits of, you know, your organization, just, you know, why click lease? Um, and what are some of the things that led to your short-term success? You know, I was, I found a lot, but, you know, it, it kind of previewed that question. I mean, I think, you know, I think probably the best thing we did was hire awesome people, right? Like we have great people and not only people that are kind of running all of our departments and running through, but like our people that are interfacing with our customers and our vendors on a daily basis, like we, one of our, one of our values or um, click is, is legendary customer service. And I think our team has really embraced that. So, you know, we sell money. There's nothing more commoditized than money, right? I mean, so it all, it all spends the same. So, you know, we really have an opportunity to make a great experience. Um, I think we did really well is we really committed to our niche. Like a lot of people, as they start to grow, or want to grow faster, get bigger, right? They start, what, what else can we do? We've always said from day one is we're going to own the micro ticket space, right? We're going to make it as efficient, you know, as possible. No human beings, completely automated. So, you know, we always asked ourselves, how does this work when we have 50,000 or 100,000 or 500,000 accounts, right? And, and really, really look big picture to make sure we were, we were structuring the business the right way. Um, we've really done a great job of staying or just letting the data run, like not get in the middle of it. You know, our, I think our key, the cool thing behind our technology, like we couldn't do the cool decisioning things we do, you know, and, and the cool tech stuff we do if we didn't have the data, like the data allows us to confidently make these decisions and put money on the street. So letting the data do the data thing is, is important, not, not letting people get their hands on it and override it and make decisions and you know dirty up that data. That's, we've been really, really good about that. Just, we don't do exceptions, period. It's the decision is the decision and we let it go for good or for bad. Um, and, then, and then I think one thing I learned, I think it was at like a Salesforce conference when we, when we kind of built our tech stack and, and went through the process, um, we built the systems that really differentiated and gave us real value. Right. And then we bought best in class technology, you know, that for things that were just, you know, would support the business that, that weren't customer facing and didn't create real competitive advantages for us, which allowed us to stand up a company extremely fast. I mean, we, you know, we started June, I'm sorry, we started January of 18. We funded our first deal the last day of June 18. So, and that's, that's standing up an entire company, you know, completely automated in, in six months, right. Which is ridiculously fast. So, uh, you know, we made some, made some pretty good decisions about how to, so, how to build. So company. almost, almost three years in, are you allowed to say how many contracts you guys have? We, we funded, over, you know, we funded over 10,000 deals already. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, and, and that's, we did a little thing like, yeah, and it's, it's growing quickly. So that 50,000 number isn't, isn't too far off. So no. I'll, I'll say never, never quickly enough. You know, that's, that's one thing I would say, I wish we did better is I wish we had gone faster, but I think you'll always hear leaders of organizations say that, especially in revenue. I wish we would go faster, but um, we're. But there's a methodical way too. I mean, yeah. as much as, um, you know, with that zero to 20 spaces, you know, there's also a lot of volatility there too. So good for you well, guys sticking to your guns. And, and I mean, the pandemic, else. whether or not we did it, you know, we had a great big pause button in the, uh, you know, in, in March, you know, it, it, we ground to a halt in, well, I say that slowed us down. Um, we, we, we very quickly in, in March, we made some decisions and we went back and we tore the whole business apart and said, all right, this is basically an opportunity to start over. Where have we nailed it? You know, where are we missing? And, and, you know, do we like what we're doing? So, you know, we, I mean, we really just, I would say really, you know, doubled down on what we were doing. You know, we, you know, we looked at our algorithms a little tighter, you know, we really had our, our um, analytics team dig in and understand where we were, you know, that slowdown period allowed that to happen. Um, you know, refined our pricing, made sure our delivery is right. Did, did some pretty massive tech enhancements, which, which we think are gonna be real game changers. So while, you know, it's tough, you know, tough on business, we've come out a much better company, you know, because we, we focused down on what, what we could really control. And, uh, and I, the little, right. little slowdown gave us that opportunity to do that. So um, that's, 
Silver yeah. lining, right? Silver lining. Silver lining, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Doug. Well, I appreciate your time today, man. It's always good seeing your face and hopefully we'll be seeing each other at a conference here in the near future. Hopefully real soon. Yep. Appreciate it, Jesse. No problem. Have a good day, man. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye.